welcome guys to this heavy set based mcq discussion that we are going on for arthropathy part that is systemic arthropathy again it has been designed in such a fashion that completion of mcq will lead to completion of the chapter and it will obviously immensely help the students who are preparing for the upcoming exams right okay so we have already discussed about arthropathy seen in acromegaly now we are going to in the next topic that is arthropathy seen in hemochromatosis all right so what is hemochromatosis hemochromatosis in medical literature there is a common saying it is a condition of iron excess right so it is a common saying that iron is a good guest only when they are taken in small amount right in large amount large amount it gets accumulated in lot of places of the body and causes hay wear of problems it gets accumulated in the liver resulting into cirrhosis in the pancreas resulting into diabetes in the skin resulting into pigmentation issues and even to the joint spaces resulting into the topic that we are going to discuss now that is hemochromatosis related arthropathy right okay so so what is hemochromatosis hemochromatosis as the name goes is due to iron excess stage now why there is iron excess for some reason there is mutation in the channel which causes passage of iron absorption of the iron in the body even from the gut so mutation in the gut in the gut there is mutation in the iron channel which leads to more accumulation of iron in the body and what does it get accumulated it get accumulated into the liver resulting into cirrhosis in the pancreas resulting into diabetes and in the skin pigmentation and in the joints to the topic that we are going to discuss is arthropathy now now this arthropathy compared to the one which we have discussed in acromegaly remember is not due to wear and tear rather due to the iron excess stage okay so pathophysiology is a little bit of different although presentation can be of similar pattern having said this let's move into our first mcq of the day so we are looking into the mcq so here it says a 55 year old male presents with pain and swelling in the second and third mcp joint for the past six months he also reports mild morning stiffness radiograph reveals joint space narrowing subchondral cyst and hook like osteophytes okay so this hook like osteophyte is a very common description in osteoarthritis related to hemochromatosis seen in almost 20 to 30 percent cases but remember it is not pathognomatic not sensitive or not specific right but it is commonly seen okay so which of the following investigation is most appropriate for confirming the underlying diagnosis so arthropathy is very very common similar to acromegaly in hemochromatosis even it is seen around 30 to 40 percent cases similar osteoarthritis changes are seen and usual presentation around 40 to 50 years of age even in some cases before the cirrhosis sets in or the pancreatic disturbances set in arthropathy starts off so if a middle-aged man comes with mcp joint involvement arthritis it should ring a bell in your mind about to look for evaluate for iron studies and check whether hemochromatosis is present or not why did he say about mcp joint so from age old we have learned regarding osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis as osteoarthritis is the change in which joints most commonly in the hand involved are distal interphalangeal joint and proximal interphalangeal joint whereas in rheumatoid arthritis is a changes in the joint which involve mainly the metacarpophalangeal joint and and proximal interphalangeal joint if osteoarthritis presents with mcp involvement that is there is a non-inflammatory arthritis with mcp involvement that also bilateral presentation the thing that should ring in your mind is hemochromatosis Right. So, it is rather the atypical presentation of osteoarthritis that needs to be evaluated for hemochromatosis. So, how do you evaluate this patient? Obviously, with serum ferritin and transferrin saturation level. Okay. So, beside this, beside this, although it involves second and third metacarpophalangeal joint, it can also involve the larger joint like other osteoarthritis as well like knees, ankle, shoulder and hip. Okay. All right. So, what are the changes in the X-rays that we can expect in such cases? X-ray changes that we can expect is, let it consider to the two end of the bones. So, first of all, as there is deposition, issue is deposition of iron and iron accumulation, there will be narrowing of joint space.
secondly secondly subcondyle below the cartilage there will be sclerosis so secondly there will be subcondyle sclerosis Sometimes there is hook like edges, hook like edges seen. This hook like edges is known as osteophytes. So, third change that you need to know is osteophytes. Although they are not unique to this disease, but can be seen in 20 to 30 percent cases. And obviously, x ray feature, x ray feature due to the cartilage involvement, there is calcium pyrophosphate deposition here as well. Now, mechanism of calcium pyrophosphate deposition is rather different in it but due to calcium deposition it can also in extra feature you can get chondrocalcinosis and and joint space is non-inflammatory unlike rheumatoid arthritis this place is this place is non-inflammatory in nature non-inflammatory fluid accumulation So, what are the changes in extra endodographic features? Number one, there will be narrowing of the joint space. Number two, subcondyle sclerosis. Number three, osteophyte formation. Number four, calcium due to calcium, there can be chondrocalcinosis. And number four, for number five, it is non inflammatory fluid accumulation. Okay. So, moving to the next MCQ. So, here it says a 50 year old woman with known hemochromatosis develops sudden severe pain and swelling in her right knee. So, sudden and pain. So, signal fluid analysis reveals weakly positive bifurangian rhomboid crystal here as you can see as well. So, how do you know what kind of bifurangian it is? Remember something like if it is yellow color, yellow color it is negative and if it is blue color it is positive. Okay, just remember this thing yellow is the negative bifurangians and blue is the positive bifurangians then it is said that yellow needle is gout yellow needle is gout and blue rhombus blue rhombus is pseudo gout now why does pseudo gout take place pseudo gout takes place due to cppt disease now, why does CPPD disease or calcium pyrophosphate disease happens here? Because, because iron hampers with the enzyme pyrophosphatase and result into decomposition of calcium pyrophosphate crystals. Okay. So, this is the basic pathophysiological mechanism. Now, coming to the next question, which of the following radiographic finding is most characteristic but not pathognomantic of hemochromatous activity? We have discussed before. It is hook like osteopers. Okay. So, this is the changes that can be seen now okay. beside this you can also see chondrocalcinosis we have already discussed and signable fluid is non-inflammatory in nature okay and beside this signable fluid this signable fluid will also contain iron laden crystal on careful examination okay so here as you can see if you can look carefully these are elevation in the mcp joint which will be usually tender in nature and as you can see there is hook like formation hook like formation in the third uh, third mcp joint okay so there is hook like formation in the second and the third mcp joint this is hook like osteophytes all right okay so, moving to the next question, a 60 year old male with hemochromatosis undergoes regular phlebotomy. That is usually the treatment of hemochromatosis. Even when there is hemochromatosis arthropathy, you need to go for phlebotomy only, nothing else. Despite treatment, his joint pain progresses. Which of the following best explains the persistent of arthropathy in hemochromatosis? Obviously, that is the main mechanism of pathophysiology, that is iron deposition induced cartilage damage. Now, iron causes this iron moiety causes irreversible damage to the cartilage by how by periodical mediated oxidative oxidative stress what does this oxidative stress causes this oxidative stress result into impairment of collagen synthesis right impairment of collagen synthesis 
and when there is impairment of collagen synthesis already set up, phlebotomy is never going to help anymore. So, it is almost the later stage, later period when this does not help. Now, now, beside this, beside this, there can be other form of damages, other form of damages, how it happens? It happens by lipid peroxidation. Lipid peroxidation is also mediated by iron and lipid peroxidation in turn again inhibits the collagen synthesis, right? And there is also iron mediated increased inhibition of synovial pyrophosphatase that we have discussed, right? So, increased inhibition of synovial, synovial pyrophosphatase that again leads to CPPT or chondrocalcinosis, right? Okay, that again leads to chondrocalcinosis and again, again iron mediated there is increased lysosomal enzyme release. So, increase lysosomal enzyme release. So, what is the pathogenesis? What is the pathogenesis for it? So, remember, remember guys, so this damages which is seen by hemochromatosis is can be divided into four type. It can be divided due to the oxidative stress which caused by iron oxidative stress what does it lead to it inhibits the collagen synthesis collagen synthesis is also inhibited by lipid peroxidation which is again done by the iron iron increases the lysosomal enzyme and iron also inhibits the synovial pyrophosphatase which leads to the cppd disease that's all regarding the pathogenesis of hemochromatosis associated with arthropathy okay so moving to the next question which is the following joint is the least likely to be affected yes we have already discussed it is the rare presentation of osteoarthritis, atypical osteoarthritis seen. So, DIP is not involved compared to primary osteoarthritis. Also, again, compared to primary osteoarthritis, hemochromatosis arthropathy is less disabling in nature. Okay, all right. So, what is the most sensitive early laboratory marker for diagnosis? It is transparent saturation. Remember, transparent saturation is better marker than serum ferritin level. And transparent saturation more than 4 to 5 percent even is the earliest indicator for iron overload. All right. Okay. So, patient with hemochromatosis arthropathy developed acute monoarthritis. Which treatment is most appropriate for the flare? For flare, see, similarly, this acute monoarthritis flare is usually due to CPPD related diseases. And for flares, treatment is similar to the CPPT. What is it? It is high dose NSAIDs. High dose NSAID or low dose steroid. Right. If it does not work, sometimes low dose quercetin low dose quercetin helps. Okay. So, high dose NSAIDs, low dose steroids or low dose calcitin will have the condition to help to address the flare in case of CPPD disease. Now, coming to the next question, which pathogenic mechanism contribute to chondrocalcinosis? So, chondrocalcinosis is by, is by iron inhibiting synovial pyrophosphatase resulting into CPPD disease or calcium pyrophosphate disease. It is calcium accumulation in the cartilages which causes chondrocalcination. Okay. So, having said that, we have checked about all the MCQs related to hemochromatosis. We have checked the topic proper. Now, let us just revise the notes from the Harrison. All right. Okay. So, this is hemochromatosis arthropathy. So, remember, hemochromatosis is a disease of iron storage disorder due to excess iron absorption. There is iron deposition in parenchymal cell and organ dysfunction. It is seen in 20 to 40 percent of cases, usually start after age of 50 and can be the first clinical sign of hemochromatosis. Now, it involves atypical joint when it mimics osteoarthritis, especially second and third MCV joint and most important point is that it is involved bilaterally, right? And it is laser disabling compared to primary osteoarthritis. In radiographic feature, hook-like osteophytes are seen, but remember it is not disease specific. But if second and third metacarpophalangeal joint is involved, it obviously warrant iron study for evolution. Also in the synovium, along with non-inflammatory nature, you can get iron-ladle cells and fibrosis and mononuclear infiltration. 
Regarding the pathology, uh, high serum transference saturation, it is the early marker more sensitive than ferritin. Iron induced joint damage is by lipid peroxidation, inhibition of collagen formation, increased lysosomal enzyme, and inhibition of synovial pyrophosphatase. All right. How do you treat? Treatment is phlebotomy, similar to hemochromatosis, but it is ineffective for established arthritis that we have seen, right? And symptomatic arthritis treatment is by acetaminophen or NSAID. CPPT flare is treated by high dose NSAIDs or short course glucocorticoid or low dose colchicine. Okay. In advanced disease, it warrants for hip or knee joint replacement. All right. Okay. So that's all about hemochromatosis related arthropathy. Thank you.